everyone's doing well today. I hope I know we've all chatted for a little bit, but. Yeah, I'm doing good. No, much better than last, much better compared to last time. Good. Oh, yeah, good, good to hear. Turns out it was COVID. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, to hear nuts. That. Well, are you all uh, feeling better now? Yeah, I'm. I am a okay right now. Aside from oh. the occasional cough, I'm a okay right now. Okay, good. No, that's good to hear. I'm sorry to hear though that you had that. Just give me one moment. I'm just updating uh, Rex. Not Rex. Sorry, uh, Knight's uh, token. We can figure the permissions. Okay, there was actually there was actually one thing I wasn't I wanted to clarify really quick. Um, it's because it sounds like it might come up today. Uh, yes. For damage, um, so I for my small sword, it's agility minus one. So it, for that's basically the damage. It would be three, or it's three dice that I'm rolling for damage. Okay. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. And is everyone inside the foundry? Uh, I know that this is uh, something new that we did not have last time. Yes, here. Yeah, I'm in the foundry, although I have no idea how to move. If you just click your token and, and drag, it should uh, move it. And if it doesn't, let me know, and I will okay. go ahead. Yeah, add... just... All right, great. I just didn't know what I was yeah, nope. It's very, it's not super similar to World 20, but the concepts are kind of the same. Yep. Uh, quick question as I finish up character creation here. Um, I rolled a 9 for my status check for possessions. What yes. Exactly you have 9 gold yeah. dragons. And you can spend on armor, weapons, horses. You're going to want to convert all of that to silver. Yeah, uh, all the uh, equipment is tracked in silver, and the exchange rate doesn't make any sense. Yes, and your silver, silver stag specifically, not silver moons. Yes, it's two. This is silver. Silver stag for each dragon. That is at the beginning of the equipment section. Great. Uh, page one thirty. Armor cost is on page one thirty. That being said, imbecile, what am I rolling? Because of the interaction. Yes. So you, um, so why don't we just do a quick recap, especially for a knight's benefit. Okay. Um, and then we can go on to the dice roll if that sounds good to you. That sounds fine. Sure. So, um, the very first session, session zero, we did house creation. So this is uh, House Greymane, which is a new house that arose out of Lord uh, Hector Greymane, as he is now called, uh, putting down a rebellion that was uh, led up by the former Grey Skulls. Uh, currently, uh, the party is um, at a Lord Coddington's estate. Uh, they attended a wedding between a lady in waiting as well as a knight. They discovered that the lady in waiting uh, had a tryst with her bodyguard and that he got her pregnant, unknown to anyone else. There was some blackmailing that was involved on Lord Greymane's part, uh, where they basically agreed to keep silent the tryst and the resulting child uh, in exchange, basically, uh, for uh, resources. Yes, uh, we we kept we did not tell anyone about the child out of wedlock, though. That is Correct. purely our house's secret. The father may also be. The father of that Triss is probably dead, so well, who knows? We actually haven't seen him all day. Maybe he just—I don't know—he could be anywhere. France, who knows? 
Yeah. I, I'm very tempted to try and try and convince Connington that when the child is old enough, it should become a ward of our house. Ooh. Okay. I'm very tempted to try that because I I know the origins of the child. No one, uh, everyone, all my close retainers do. No one else. Or the only one that would know is uh, what's her face? Uh, Miss Valen. Not Kieran. Oh, Miss Valen. Yeah, Miss Valen. And just a little bit more about the setting. Um, this is taking place at the beginning of uh, the Dance with Dragons. So right now, the uh, the party, in addition to getting the summons to attend the wedding, also received a summon from uh, King Aegon II to uh, attend his coronation and to pledge fealty to him, um, despite uh, what should be Queen uh, Rhaenyra um, having been appointed the previous uh, heir, uh, which he is ignoring and has declared himself king. I just want to say the rightful queen is Queen Rhaenys, whom he never mm-hmm. was. Putting that out there. Oh, yeah. God, there's so much I don't know about this setting. And does it help that Rhaenyra and Rhaenys are very similar to each other? Yeah. And that they're also on the same side. Honestly, yeah. like, the the show actually really helped me with that because it's, it's all just random names, but seeing them, seeing actual faces put to them makes it a, a little easier. Yeah, I'm going to have yes. to, me and Ned are going to have to watch that eventually together. Um, so I have read all Fire and Blood. That is the book in which both the show and this game are based upon. Okay. Um, the way that uh, I do things, uh, so you know, Knight, is this will not necessarily follow the plot of the show, the book. So your character's actions can make a difference um, and mean there's a potential different outcome than what ended up happening in the book. The show is the show, and it's only taken years before they get to a resolution. Well, it's I'm a good thing that we that. don't know anything. It is. So we don't know what we're going to fuck up. We just know we're going to fuck it up. Anyway. No more Targaryens. House Valerian rules. No, no. House House Greymane takes takes the throne. Ooh, we're oh. gonna need to start working on that now, though. <laughs> All I have to do is marry marry someone to the queen. We'll be fine. Which queen? Yes. Good ah. point. Yes. Yeah, the answer to that is yes. Uh, but, uh, so roll, how do I roll for glory? Um, so what I'm going to do with the amount of resources he gave you, roll, uh, two die four, uh, and just have them be separate because you're going to want to add each one to your different resource. Oof. No, three and a one. All right, so what resources would you like uh, that to be added to? Oh, God. Uh, we have our house sheet somewhere, right? Yes. Um, you have this uh, Google sheet that has everything on it. Uh, let me open that up. Oh, unit upgrades. There we are. Documentation. All right, so let's see. Hmm. I think. So, I think that the best place to put this is putting the three in population and the one in defense. Okay. 
So maybe he had some people kind of emigrate to your lands. Yeah. Like skilled craftspeople and the like. That's almost enough to put us over the next population limit. Almost. And this is not your house portions role. I will do that probably in a couple of weeks, uh, which will represent about a month passing. Right. And night, so you know, we end the last session with a roar of what sounded like a dragon. That's a whoa. -oh. Yeah. So, uh, I guess as soon as that happens, assuming that we're all inside, uh, Hector and Kieran both uh, run out. What was that, Rex? Sorry, you cut out. I said that Hector and Kieran both probably run out to see what's going on. All right. Well, what do the rest of y'all do? Um, gonna have to do the same since uh, we're in, you know Hector is the Lord and uh, Eldred's um, paycheck is entirely dependent on Hector staying alive and Aaron staying. alive. All right, at night. Sure. Out I go. And Mr. Claw. Uh, so I think Sir Wendell is gonna. Is there a window from the uh, Great Hall that faces out onto uh, where everyone is? Yeah. If you um, let's see here. If you see where Heldred is, kind of like those uh little um brown uh, windows that are right next to it. Yeah, like right in there. Yeah, I think Wendell's gonna like hang back behind one of these uh, walls uh, and just see what's happening before he runs out. Right, very good. With a flagon of wine, of course. Of course. I expected no less from Wendell. Oh, so you know, I I believe Wendell has the um, what is it? Alco tree. Alcoholic tree. Yeah, bound, to the, bound to the bottle. With it, um, you can hear the mighty uh, stomping of the ground as a huge beast lands outside of the castle. And several minutes later, with Lord Connington uh, waiting inside of the middle of the castle grounds with you all. A prince emerges. Prince Aemon Targaryen. The one-eyed prince, they call him. He has a silver hair, a purple eye, and then a startling black uh, onyx gem inside of one of his eye sockets. He looks at Lord Connington looking down upon him from his great height and says, Lord Connington, I expect that the right of hospitality is open tonight. Lord Connington looks at him and replies, of, of, of course, my prince, what, what, what to be all the pleasure? Prince Aemon replies, fire and blood is the pleasure. I am on my way to the Baratheon seat or we will soon find out their loyalties to my liege, my brother, Aegon II. Who are you? And he looks over towards Lord Greymane, as well as your companions. Uh, Hector uh, bows his head as he puts his hand over his chest and says, this, I am Lord Hector Greymane of the recently founded Greymane House. And he will but he will kind of, uh, in a kind of a swift motion, kind of kick uh, Herod in the back of the back of the leg, indicating that he too should bow and introduce himself. Uh, Herod will, in fact, do so once I save his character sheet. <laughs> so yeah, um, he he uh, bows and and 
introduces himself as well. Um, should I describe the character? Yes, yeah, so we can get a better idea of what Herod looks like. Awesome. So given he wasn't expecting combat or anything of the sort, um, he is currently just in kind of noble's garb. Um, sure. The only the only thing he really has on him being a, a signet ring to show that he is the, the heir to the Grey Main House and the heirloom on his back, which is a very large two-handed um, Valyrian steel sword. All right, very good. What did the rest of y'all do at the appearance of the prince? Well, uh, Helton, uh, I guess I'll describe him just for uh, Knight's benefit as well for this uh, one that he knew. But Eldred's this uh, six, six and uh, only on clothing on six and a half feet tall uh, muscle giant here. He's just wearing a uh, noble's garb. This is a wedding. He's not really armed or armed or armored. But uh, he has this. Uh, he's uh, has his red beard done up in uh, done up in a braid. He's done up in a number of braids, and he is very very flourishing his sword all over his face. Um, but yeah, as for what he does, uh, he's going to you know keep quiet uh, and just you know bow bow to uh, uh, to Aemon for you know just not really saying much, just keeping an eye on him. And how, how is Aemon dressed? He's dressed in dra in riding leather uh, at the moment. Okay, so no, not like an armor or anything like that. No, not an armor or anything like that. He's dressed for mobility rather than war. Um, so I guess, well, uh, so Sir Wendell, who, uh, for, again, the sake of, uh, Knight, uh, I get, he has, uh, he's like an old, older guy in his mid thirties. Uh, he's, I guess sort of looks like a cross between Richard O'Brien and, uh, Shakespeare in the, he's got that really high forehead, but like, uh, re otherwise really long, uh, thick uh, auburn hair and a heavy red beard. Um, he looks like he used to be like, you know, like built like a linebacker, but being, but he sort of let it go as he's gotten older. Uh, he's dressed in a, a bright orange uh, wedding attire uh, with uh, uh, studded with um, amethysts and the design of a giant crab across his breast uh intentionally dressing trying to dress more expensively than anyone else in the room and he will stay assuming the prince hasn't noticed him directly will stay behind the wall and peek out the window not trying not to draw attention to himself more than he already has All right, let me roll for the good prince. Hmm. See whether or not he notices. Man has one eye, he has to roll his eyes, right? Gotta be, that's got to help in my favor. Stay on his blind side. Ooh, that oh. doesn't. He, uh, he gives a shout. You there, lurking in the shadows. Come forth into the light. Oh, uh, hardly lurking, my prince. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Sir Wendell Claw of the house of the same name at your service, my liege. With that, he looks at you and says, So you do declare that it is my lord, Aegon II, who is in fact your liege? And he looks pointedly at you. Uh, I... Well, I... There is... The prince, and there is a... Uh, 
Uh, whoever it is, you're the prince. Are you not? I am the prince, but it is my brother who has the true claim to the throne. But your title remains the same, regardless of who has that uh, claim, yes? So referring to you as my prince is not uh, necessarily an admonishment of one or the other. Enough of these tongue-twisting games. Do you pledge loyalty to the, our king, Aegon II? I look to my... Uh, my prince, I must look to my liege lord, who speaks for me in such matters. Imagining this Spider-Man meme where everyone's looking at each other. <laughs> yep. Uh, he looks back... Probably He looks back to Hector, god damn it. As, uh... Hector, who still bowing at this point, says is our loyalty is only to that of the throne. If Aegon truly, truly is king of these lands, then our loyal, then he is our liege. What do you mean, if? It is merely a saying. If, as in. If it is true, then it is true. It is true from the misses I've received that he is King Aegon, is it not? If so, then I am beholden to him as he is the king of these lands. I there's a good lad, he says, which is kind of funny considering the age difference between you two. Yeah. With that, he says, we best not keep my dragon waiting. She will need a great many sheep. And Lord Connington kind of swallows and says, uh, how many sheep, sire? And with that, Prince Mountain just laughs and says, release the flock and let her have her hunt. At which point, Hector turns to uh, Heldred and says, is, I'm glad I'd never started a sheep flock. I'm glad I never started a sheep farm. Well, let's hope the dragon doesn't have a taste for horse. Or bees. <laughs> if you give that dragon mead, I swear by the seven. Look, as long as the dragons don't burn my precious, precious bees, then everything will be fine. We keep going. We, we abide on this precious nectar of life. And that, my friend, is the secret. And wh how we'll stay alive through this. So, Aaron just looks confused at his father. Little little background is we made our we made our family name off of war horses. Sir Wendell Claw made his family name off of the meat he make his family makes. From bees. <laughs> Got it. Mm -hmm. Oh right, yes, we have a yes, we have a meadery by uh, Claw Hall. Ah, and you need honey for that. Ooh, need a lot of it. So please wait for him to leave before you start bad mouth. <laughs> <laughs> With that, Prince Aemon uh, does end up saying, let me go and return to my dragon. She will be most hungry after the swift ride. Okay. And with that, he disappears back into the darkness where you can hear the roar of a dragon coming out. Which point, uh, Hector will go to Lord Connington whisper in his ear and says this this was unexpected yes most unexpected this bolts ill if the dragon is already on the move 
if they're sending him to uh, speak to Lord Baratheon, they're probably sending other missives to the other great houses as well. We have uh, little time and less. Yes, yeah, soon our true allegiances must be made public, regardless of whether we wish it or not. We should send a raven to Lord Baratheon and let him know what is coming. It is better that he be prepared than be blindsided as we were. Yes, that would be for the best. And with it, we seek out Maester. Maester Smalls. You're killing me, Smalls. Yeah. And a small elderly man emerges. Oh, I don't I have a token. called Smalls. See, see what I did there? Yeah. I, no, that was in character. Oh, okay. <laughs> Please don't insult people. We've worked on this. The maester emerges and says, Yes, my lord. And Lord Connington says, Send a raven at once to the Baratheon house. Or house of the Baratheon. We must let them know that a prince is on their way. And with it, with nodding smallly, uh, Maester Small says, Yes, of course, my lord. Of course. And the soon disappears back into the castle, heading up to where the ravens are kept. With that, what are you all going to do? It is now quite late at night. It is the hour of the wolf. Um, I believe it is time for us to uh, return to the quarters and hope that the dawn brings us better news um, before we leave. I will with the con uh, Connington again and say, "Have you already sent?" The raven to the true owner of the throne. Yes. Yes, I have. Good. Lord Smalls will do so immediately. Well, whatever happens, you are a leash lord and we will support you. We must support our queen. Princess or Queen Rhaenyra. And Hector will nod and says, I shall return to my quarters. If you need anything, send for me. Of course, Lord Greyman. Mm -hmm. And, yep, go to bed because the plan was to leave in the morning, but that might not be the plan anymore. Well, anyone else to try to do anything at night, or you're going to let dragons lie so to speak um let them lie yeah i i don't um, think i can i can like make dragon scale armor or something are you the dragonborn so i just i go and chop the dragon's head off and i get the power to shout at people <laughs> And Sir Wendell will remain in the Great Hall until uh, they stop serving food and wine, and uh, three serving girls have to carry him off a bench and dump him in the courtyard. Perfect. Great. Sir Wendell is uh, extremely. Oh, hey, Kitty. Sorry. My cat decided to join me. Um, Sleeping in a pile of hay. Yeah. So kind of propped up uh, against this cart over here. And with that, the dawn breaks with a massive hangover for Sir Wendell Claw. And um, a, a breakfast feast is being consumed in the Great Hall. Or Lord Connington is presiding. 
he's awake, awoken by the sound of, uh, or the smell of bacon and uh, whatever we else we eat for breakfast. There's bacon, some uh, eggs that haven't fried up, uh, some roast chicken, and of course, like endless amount of porridge. I will, um, is the prince in the hall with us? The prince is not in the hall with you. That case, uh, Hector will go over to Lord Carrington again and, uh, ask, ask, where is the prince on this fateful day? The prince has left to fly further into the Stormlands. They go to the Baratheons. And that was quicker than I expected. Usually they take some time to rest before moving on to another castle. There must be something urgent happening. It seems to me, from my conversations with him, he wishes to secure the allegiance of that great house and the subsequent bannermen, such as ourselves. Which way do you think Baratheon will stand? Well, he was quite vocal for the Queen, who never was, decades ago. I would imagine that he will support our Queen now, as the true heir to the Iron Throne. If this is the case, we must be prepared. Let's hope he has the courage of those convictions when there's a dragon in his keep. With... I don't think the Targaryens would be so bold as to burn down the keep at this stage. You know, it may not be, you know, a man may carry an axe and not use it, but it's still a promise of violence. I don't know if any of us were alive during the reign of Magor the Cruel, so I don't know. Probably fine. No, definitely not. That was I, scale of time. I have no idea. That was like well, truly before any of the all time. Uh, okay, yeah, we like if anything, we maybe were alive for King Jaehaerys. Yes, King Jaehaerys, he definitely would have been um, alive for. Although some of you wouldn't quite yet. Yeah, okay, got it. Rainus, yeah. Herod just kind Rainus, of the king who never was, is a very different Targaryen from, you know, Rhaenyra. Uh, for Lord Baratheon may choose to, you know, find... Uh, yeah, this is a friend Lord Baratheon, and just swore his oaths to Queen uh, Rainus. Is he not burning around? Yep. I was, gonna, I, I was gonna say, is that me? And I tapped back up the Discord. But no. It's a bit distorted, yeah. Just oh, my end? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just saying that it's a different Lord Baratheon um, who swore his, uh, that Queen uh, Rhaenyra's, um should become Queen compared to the current Lord but not made his uh, oath yet known. But his house has long supported uh, the female. A man who does not hold to his convictions is not one at all. Well, like, if you think that it's a different, it's a different lord. The father of the current lord supported uh, Rhaenys Valerian. No, I, I, I understand that. Yeah. But Herod is saying son that... Of that. Herod is saying that the convictions of the father stay with the son, basically. Or that at least he thinks they should. Oh, oh okay. Let's hope that's the case, then. Well, either way, we will more than likely learn in due time. I, for one, must think that we must return to our holdings and shore up the defenses and murder our men. I do not think this will be a quiet coronation. Herod, uh, nods. What 
do the rest of you do? Oof, Wendell just takes in uh, the implications of that statement and just finishes the rest of his flagon. Eldred is, you know, uh, leaning back in his chair and thinking about, you know, pick, you know picking his teeth and thinking about, uh, gonna have to, gonna have to, you know, ready the troops into the fighting instead. Mm hmm. All right, so it sounds like you all ready to head out. Do you have any departing words for Lord Connington? Uh, Hector will hold out his hand and say, um, stay strong, my friend. I'm sure that, uh, that Lord Baratheon will make a wise decision. Yes, I will. I will do my best to make the decision that is necessary for our house. Yep. And Hector will go off. Get All on right. his destrier. One moment. All right, so you are traveling through the woods. Which you all see a kind of a wooded area, I hope. Yep. yep. Okay, first, I uh, appreciate you guys being understanding me. This is the first time you've seen the boundary, so. Um, good. Happy to hear that it's worked so far. And you can hear the howl of wolves in the distance. Do you do? March onward. Eldred's just gonna get his get his weapons out. Yeah, I'm gonna pull out the uh, sword and spear. Kieran will probably pull out the uh, spear, her spear as well, or halberd, not sword and shield. Yeah, pull out my halberd. Okay, I'm assuming we're, we're, we're not arm. We're not arm. Uh, that is up to what would have made sense. So you're traveling back home, so whether or not you would have been armored would have been up to you. I feel like Hector wouldn't have, but Kieran might have. I guess I think... would probably also be armored, since, uh, you know, you never know about who you can attack or who you are capable of attack. Heron probably would not be. He'd probably just still be in his noble clothes. Yeah, I think I don't think Wendell's armored either. He's probably in traveling clothes. All right. So you make your way along the path. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I can zoom in on this. Um, if you just scroll. Yeah, it's just scrolling. Okay. Well, I don't have a map. Uh, oh, oh, trickier. That I am not as sure of then if you don't oh, have it. It's, it's fine. I can still work with this. It's fine. I can see everything. It's just, uh, you know, I like to zoom it's in. Uh, firstly, I like to zoom in. <laughs> My apologies about that. I didn't know that it was the case. I think if. There's a way of doing mouse wheel on mouse pads. I can't remember how you do it. Well, it's like uh, on the right side of the trackpad or something on the edge. Nah, it's not for me. Nah, okay. I have. That's all I got. I don't. I don't know, chieftain. Good luck. It's fine. It's fine. I was just. Uh, I was. I took me back to my computer. My regular computer for uh, the next session. Okay.
So as you make your way through the woods, you hear the howls grow, grow ever closer. Uh, should we move our tokens? Uh, yes. Herod's a, a courageous lad. He's not letting this run. Swords at the ready. Elder's gonna do the same. He's got his uh, he's got his long axe out. Oh, Wendell will uh, lean over to Kira and just now, my lad. This is always this is a good example of a positive life lesson. Never go running into danger when you've got two people perfectly willing to do it for you. And he'll just stand by here with his like sword and shield, but also uh, just letting them go ahead. All right. With that, the howls um, become ever closer still. And I'm going to need people to make an awareness check. Only two. Wow, Mr. Claw. Oh, wait, hold on. But I need to uh, subtract yeah. the two lowest. Uh, if you do KH your uh, skill level, it'll automatically do that. Oh, does that? Yeah, K KH uh, whatever number your skill level is, it'll, it'll automatically discard those that are not part, part of it. Uh, you can also click on your dice pool that you rolled, and it'll show you everything you rolled as well. Yeah, I see. It's um. So I guess that's technically an eighteen then. Very good. I got a thirteen. Awareness one. <laughs> and six. All right. So. Let's see here. And let me go ahead. Uh, and Kieran's will be a. I'll let you roll for Kieran. Six. Eighteen. All right. So everyone except Lord Greymane <laughs> notices that there are three wolves in these cliffs. Um, right in the forested area above you. And that they are howling and that they're, you can see their saliva is dripping from their mouths as they're hungry for blood. So they're right Let's see here. And here. You can see kind of a green highlight. Hmm. So you can get the general area. So what do you all do? You got these hungry wolves that are there kind of obscuring the path um, that you want to continue to walk on. Right. Ooh. Uh, uh. Eldrick tries scaring them away, but as soon as he does, he's going to just uh, kind of walk up banging his... Uh, Against his against his chest, just uh, trying to intimidate the wolves to death. Whooping and hollering and howling like a goddamn animal. All right, so it sounds like you're going to make almost like a persuasion coercion check, or intimidate check rather. All right, the wolves just howl back and then growl at you and then dig up the ground beneath you and start making their way down towards you. 
Oof. Anybody have a crossbow? Um, I neglected a uh, ranged weapon. Hmm. So did that's I. that's something we should look into at a certain point. Yes. Um. Important question. Yes. The boundary. Every like grid you move says it's five feet. Is that actually five feet? I, I don't know what the fuck the, the measurement for the system is. Um, Technically, the measurement for the system is measured in yards, but we'll convert it. Um, so you just have to multiply your yards movement over into feet. Oh, oh boy. Is real fucky. Okay. I am thrilled. So yes, the system is. Um, I'll look in the next time to see if I can convert it over to yards. Uh, can we, yeah. Can we just uh, pretend that every time it says yards, it says uh, five feet. Yeah, we could just make yeah. that because it measures in yards. Every square should be a foot or a yard. Yeah, let's just do that. Then I would be able to move the same amount. I I was gonna be able to move anyway, which is three. Uh, I guess I'll move closer. I only have a melee weapon, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go fight some wolves. Anybody care to join? Yeah, I I have to actually remove wolf from Hector. Hunger's gonna go to the southern side because of strength to intercept them before they get to Lumen or Draenei. All right, feel free to move your tokens around accordingly. Ah, damn it. Fine. Uh, Kieran, I don't actually have control over her token. Uh, uh, give me one moment and I can change that for you. Alright. Yeah, Wendell's really uh, keeping that shield up between him and the wolves. Yeah. Alright, you can uh, move it now. All right. Yes, uh, I can. Uh, so Kieran will do a sprint, which, uh, yeah, the sprint is really weird. Uh, we'll. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, it's control. And then, because uh, she, her job is also to protect Herod as much as it is to protect me. Well, his job. Yes. I also, someone rotated Kieran's token just slightly. Oh, there we go. Yeah, no, I can see that. Same thing with Herod's. Oh, I uh, thought Herod's it was just like a more training. dynamic angle. Like he's leaning into the shot. There we go. All right, it. and then ah, uh, uh, Hector will uh move up on the flank over here. Uh, All right. He halberd out and just preparing. I don't. Is there a bold action to strike when they come near? Um, narratively, I will say that you can do that. I don't know, think there is in game, but I'm always a fan of holding your action to do that. Yeah, I need to open up the things again. Yeah. All right, let's r roll for initiative. So that'll be uh, um, your agility, um, and you can use quickness if you have that as your bonus act. Ooh, I'm gonna have two dice for that. Eight. I should really invest in that stuff. Sixteen, we have eight. Nine. We have nine. For Kieran, eight. it will be a that's a decent roll. Okay. 
Okay, I'm just putting in an order here. It's 16, 12, 9, 8, 6. Let me roll for the wolves. They got a 12. Oh, it looks like earlier. For Greymane, do you have any ranks and quickness? Uh, no, Kieran does not. Kieran, okay. So the wolves will go before Kieran then, since they tied. Uh, you look at the quickness then yep. as the tie-breaking factor. All right, so first up, we have Mr. Claw. Okay, well, um, so... I'm not exactly sure how I'm supposed to calculate my movement, but the thing came with four, so maybe I'll stick with that for right now. Um, uh, so one, I'm two, three. I'm pretty sure that run is a special too. Um, it is. So. Oh, so, I get it then. So it's base four plus your run specialty divided by two minimum, I think. And then your, I think it's rounded up, and then minus your bulk divided by two. Got it. So four. Four, I think, unless you have run or something. Okay, so yeah, just four then. So even better. Um, so I'll move up. Is that not a cliff? Then? I think that's a cliff. That's a cliff. Yeah, that's a cliff. You get you oh, gotta go around the cliff. Is there is there terrain? I can't see any terrain. No, it's just, it, oh. it's the the ter, the uh can can the you is everything black, dude? No, okay, so I can see trees, but the floor is all gray. Hold on, let me see if I can uh I just yeah. better reload. Try try refreshing because there that was a you you are trying to climb a cliff. Oh that's so funny, I can't see it at all. You just she just T posed his way up, it's fine, don't worry about it. No, no, Skyrim yeah. jumping. He used the horse. Yeah. TC yelled my way up there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm double checking to make sure that everyone has the same permissions in terms of what they can yeah, see. No, if someone that. else wants to go, if whoever wants to go next, uh, I'll hold my turn while I figure this out. I think it's the wolves. Damn it. <laughs> of course it's the wolves. I mean, I, I, I'm, like, sitting here ready to strike with a sword, so if they want to roll up and try to whack me or Kieran, I'll take it. I'll just whack at one. All right, well, I'll let the wolves go, then. All right, that one's going to go for Kieran. That's honestly pretty... I would have waited for them to attack me anyway. I can't get up close to them. Yep. Next one's gonna go kind of diagonally across from you, Eric. I'm gonna, I'm gonna whack it because I I uh, I was uh, I was under the uh, the assumption I was gonna hold my action because I was going in knowing this was gonna happen. I probably should have specified early, but I also didn't do like a sprint or anything. All right, the wolves uh, have spent their actions moving. They are now going to uh, roll to try to bite and claw you. All right. Um, would I be able to, to whack it with a held action? Um, it has not yet been your turn, but you did it from before. So yes, you can whack it as it's trying to bite you. Let's go. Twenty-two. Damn. Uh, um, all I right. Think that definitely beats his defense, probably. Oh uh, no, it it toasts his defense. Um, so you uh, succeed by uh, see here. At least two degrees. You might succeed by three. So you succeed by. 
uh, three degrees of success. Uh, so what does that do for damage? So you're going to do your base damage three times. So uh, or your damage plus your um, of the weapon plus your athletics. So that is 27. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that wolf is now a chish kebab. Great sword go burr. Yep. He is now destroyed. The one targeting Kieran is going to go ahead and go next. All right. Total of nine. And that beats it by two. All right, but Kieran has uh, arm armor on, yes. I, I have Kieran as having oh sorry, that's Sir Wonder Claw, that's why my sheet is all confused. <laughs> has armor of eight. Correct. So uh just kind of hits it on Kieran's uh, chest area and the armor deflects at the worst of the blows. Uh, good old Brigantine. And finally, the last one is going to go ahead and target you, Lord Greymane. Alright. An 11? Let me look at my combat defense when I'm not wearing armor and Kieran's not here. So my armor penalty is minus four. It is agility plus athletics. Five plus awareness, six. Plus defense bonus, do not have. So it is six. So that is not double it, but I think that's an extra degree of success. So it will do that damage twice. Yes. Make sure that, well, I guess. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah, that is the damage. Okay. Yep. So that is going to be a total of six points of damage. Ouch. Game of Thrones is rough when it comes to characters' health. Oh, yeah, it is. I need to spend points on getting that endurance up. Take injury, but wounds do uh, reduce the damage. Yes, you can. Oh, but that only put me in half, so yeah. <laughs> All right. So next up, we have someone. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, I can see the terrain now, so uh. Oh, good. Uh, now I real realizing the precarious situation I'm in. Uh, now. Um, just moves away from this cliff slightly, as I seeing the uh, lower part of the cliff though. You are you are you are the lower part of the cliff. Because we oh, all yeah. started below the cliff. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So. Uh, yeah, I'll just slide my way down this way. And oops, seeing like it attack Lord Greyman, I was like, oop, uh, I gotta stop this. Gotta run over and stab it. All right. Very good. Go stab it, he said. All right, you so beat it by 10. Yeah, 16. Um, All so right. it does three damage. Three damage, three times. Give me just one moment to see if it even survives that. That is enough that you managed to slay it right away. So describe what that looks like. Uh, okay, so I see it like 
like uh, jump and like latch on to uh, Lord Greymane's. Oh no, because well, I see it like latch onto his arm, and like I realize, oh shoot, I have to do something, and I just uh like run over, like uh, I just run over and stab it, like. I've been watching The Sopranos, and I'm thinking of that scene where the guy just is walking down the street, and Vito just r- runs up behind him and shoots him in the back of the head. I feel like he toddles up like that. Oh, okay, okay, I see what you're saying. But the equivalent of just, like stabbing a wolf through like the neck as it's biting my liege lord. Yeah, I hear. Where you- okay. Ooh, uh, didn't, uh, hurt you, did it? Just a minor scratch. It's not the worst. And then oh, I think... we'd better, uh, help your, uh... Oh, we'd better, uh, see to your boy, then. I'll take care of it. You, you make sure that Lord Greymane... You make sure Lord Greymane's, uh, arm is tended to. Yeah. And then I guess Kieran. Yeah. Alright. Kieran will attack with a spear. Uh, ouch, I rolled two ones, too. That is a 23. Uh, yeah, no, it's, you can describe how it dies, but it's dead. Very, very dead. Uh, with, uh, yep, that would have actually been a longsword, not a spear. Uh, because, that's right, she uses, uh, Kieran uses longswords when not on a horse. The spear stuff is just so that Kieran can use lances. Uh, right. so, she, uh, so Kieran, uh, holds up the shield and then just bashes the wolf's head down as she, uh, as it goes to strike. And then from over the shield, just stabs it in the spine before bringing it out and slicing its head off. All right, the wolf lets out a pitiful moan as it falls and collapses to the ground. You did well. No, I'm not. Yeah. Kier- Kieran is controlled by you. And uh, yes, yeah. Sorry, I was about to respond. Sorry. Thank you, my lord. I did what I needed to to protect you. I only wish I could have protected you from the wolf that maimed you. That's not maimed yet. Father, are you certain? house that used to be and uh harry kind of gives a small smile i'm certain i used to be a knight you try losing an eye and um, i prefer to prevent that i'm surprised uh Wolves try to attack a, a group so much larger than theirs. Some pretty, and they must really be, they must really have been stunned. Hmm. Is it possible that there, whatever is going on in these woods currently, is caused them to has caused whatever prey they usually feast on to leave? We should. See the Huntsmaster about this. It's something driving them down from the hills and into s- civilized areas. Either way. Well, this one seemed to be, he kicks one of them, just 
this one seems to have been uh, mad itself, so it would explain part of it. This one didn't bite you, did it? I... We will have the Meister look at it. Well, onward we go. Oh, ready then. Give me just one moment. You reappear at a very familiar looking castle. It's almost like all castles use the same architecture in this area. Something like that. They There was a sudden rush that y'all were designing at the same time. We all hired the same uh, castle architect. Yeah. That or, uh, you know, the Greece like, just decided to copy the comic strip. God, posers. They're so lame. Anyway. As we arrive in the castle, uh, Hector will call for uh, for uh, Elias. Elias will quickly emerge and go to you, saying, What is it, my lord? You look grievously wounded. It's not as bad as it appears. I was bitten by a wolf. It must have been a mighty fierce wolf to be able to hurt you, my lord. Well, without without my eye, it's a bit hard to react as quickly as I used to. Aye, that makes sense, my lord. Would you like me to tend to your wound? Yes, if you would please. Alrighty then. Quickly looking at how healing works. So it's on page 63. So you have to spend one hour every day. You must rest. Uh, and they, uh, at the end of the time, you substitute your healing test results for the patient's endurance test. Uh, because on page 63, it kind of talks about the actual test that needs to be made. Yeah, sorry, I was talking about the um, kind of the action with the skill self, but yes, you're right, it is on one oh, okay. uh, in terms of kind of the recovery. Yeah, I think I think uh, hit points recover naturally, it's just injuries and wounds where you need to take, where you need actual use of healing to make it. Oh, at the end of uh, combat, you remove all damage to your health. Yep, oh, you're really? right. Oh. Okay. That was kind of safe there. Yeah. That's interesting. I kept, I kept saying it's just it's just some scratches. Yeah, you won't really make so much as scratched up. The wolf's teeth just couldn't get through his uh, his clothing. Very thick noble's clothing is uh, helpful in that way. Which which also means that. Uh, it is that combat might last a little longer than health. I think health is just you being out. If you can take injuries to reduce damage. Yep. So we'll have okay. to take a serious look at how that works. Sounds like if you're reduced to zero, you're just dead. But you, it, if you can mitigate damage by taking injuries. So if someone comes at you with a really high damage weapon that wipes out everything, you're just gone. Okay, so lesser characters are defeated once their health is reduced to zero. Yep, as it was the case for the wolves. Uh, so we can take injuries to negate uh, stuff. So uh, we'll just have to take a look at it a little more in depth. Yeah, I'll have to double check that. It's been a while since I've run that uh, combat portion, so I apologize. Well, uh, after he just puts a light bandage on it because it's just to keep it from getting infected. Uh, Raymond, uh, 
Hector will look at Eliza and say is one of the Targaryen princes crashed the wedding. What what did he do? It's where is he a Targaryen prince out of these parts? He was on his way to see Lord Baratheon to confirm where his loyalties lied. Dear. Fear for our, the sake of our house during these times. If we have dragon back riders coming to us, hmm. and uh, Hector will look to Helga and says, "Is just in case, have the men be vigilant." And then look back to Elias and says, "Is take take my wife and daughter and make sure that they are kept safe in the keep." Of course, my lord. The safety of your house will always be paramount. And with that, he takes your wife and daughter and disappears back to the keep. You may wish to... How... What is the defense of Castle Claw? Uh, give me one moment. This is a small castle. So it gives a plus six bonus to the defense. Oh, gray skull or claw? Claw. Oh, claw. Sorry. I think, I think it's plus four. Yeah. I'm looking at the book and a small castle says plus six. Yes. No, I'm talking about like what is your, because you also have your own, your, your lands have their own defense score. Yeah, because I have a hall, so uh, defending my hall gives you a plus four for defending mm -hmm. it. Are you? I, the reason why I just asked is it says on player creation it says you have a castle or a small castle. Right. Uh, Greymane has a castle. Yes. I thought Gray you you both did because your defense was high enough that you could afford it. Uh, I don't think I was able to afford a castle. I think I could. The options I had was um, like two towers or a keep. No, 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 okay. No. You, you had a 30, I think. Yeah, you had a 30. Yeah, you have a total of 30. Hmm. For your I, defense. Which is exactly enough for a small castle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we Did definitely we... gave you a, a castle. Okay. Um, if you say so, I have no memory of this. I remember it differently, I think. Yeah. At which point, um, because we are slightly more defendable, uh, Hector will look to uh, Wendell and say, is, and Wendell, your, your wife and daughters are welcome to stay here as well. It is, your, while Castle Claw's defenses are comparable to ours, this castle has stood for longer. That's true, but you know what they say about keeping all your eggs in one basket. Understandable. But perhaps for the time, at least, until we have a plan, we'll keep everyone together until uh, we consolidate our means. Tear a castle claw down. Build it, build, use the bricks to build another castle around Castle Grayskull. Well, why don't we move the bricks from Cras Castle Grayskull over to around to, to build a wall around Castle Claw? Well, uh, the bricks are are older, so they're heavier. So in terms of logistics, it's easier to move uh, Castle Claw to Castle Grayskull than it is to move Castle Grayskull to Castle Claw. Yeah, but then we could have a port city, which is uh, what everyone wants. Uh, leave me, leave me to my bees. Leave my bees. Game of Thrones Beach episode? Oh my god. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh. He popped it so it was going to return animated. He didn't want to be animated. There's always a chance for that. Tales of Castle Grayskull. What's the next step? Do we uh, consolidate with 
other houses in the Stormlands? I think we're going to need to uh, establish some some sort of support alliance because there is um, yeah because if you know we make sure our neighbors are you know keep on each other's backs and that we're not going to just all uh, you know try to murder each other once the war once the you know the war kicks off. Depending on how uh, Lord Baratheon's uh, decision goes, that might be wise. Yeah, it's gonna. No, no matter which way uh, it turns, some house, some houses will turn, will side with uh, Rhaenyra. Others will side with uh, Aegon and his mother. So uh, precisely, as we know the lay of the land. Yeah, we'll basically we'll have to wait until we hear what Lord Baratheon's decision is before we can start uh, trying to make alliances. Unless we form our alliances beforehand, so that we can defend ourselves. If his, if he, well, how should I say, makes the wrong decision. Um. Lord Coddington, who in turn is is backed by you, Lord Victor, then we have then uh, that is not inconsiderable. It's not inconsiderable political clout that can be used to push Lord Baratheon towards you know one side or the other. If Lord Coddington has Lord Coddington, Coddington is ready, willing, and able to hand this war to the Stormlands, and if we can secure more houses things his way and turn it our way, then we should hopefully be able to navigate the storm more easily. Mm. I understand your logic. If that is the case, our next step might be to call minor houses in these areas to come have a feast in Castle Grayskull so that we may persuade them to stand with to to petition Lord Baratheon to side with Queen Rhaenyra. And so and you all know. Lord oh, Heron and, uh, and young Lady Helen are both unmarried, so it's, you know, might be time to start considering matches sooner rather than later. Ooh, I'd love to plan a wedding. Oh, an excuse to buy more clothes. I'll send for me immediately. Aaron just kind of turns. <laughs> well, we're going to need to up production if we're going to have enough for the wedding feast. Well, slow down there. If this, neither of my children are old enough to be wed yet, they can be betrothed. Which, Which is, is a... reason for celebration in and of itself. Possibly. I will also petition Lord Connington that the unborn bastard that he has no knowledge of yet to be made a ward of the Grey Maids. It will give us some leverage over the... I cannot remember the, the Valen. It will give us leverage over House Valen. Yeah, if nothing else, it will keep them from killing him. That being said, is uh... and uh, you know if we send it's a. Should be a good opportunity to root out uh, spies and uh, a cat's paws in our midst. Yeah. So, roughly in this region, how many like minor houses are there? So, overall, I was actually looking at this earlier. In terms of number of houses, there's probably about 20, 25 houses. 
uh, which most of which are going to be minor houses, because uh, that's just how it goes. Well, more minor houses make up. Uh, so, like old house Selmy, for example, um, you have House Dondarrion is a more prominently known house. Um, I have. Let me screenshot this, and I can send you the list of houses. I'm just going to look at Stormland's houses with cool-looking sigils and just decide based on that. Yeah. Basically, we're probably going to invite probably two or three smaller houses. I yeah. have a, actually probably four or five houses and just kind of give a uh, invitation of uh like an image invitation to the Coddingtons. But I'll invite them to a feast. Okay. I just posted a list of houses that are in the storm lands. Yo, they got the turtle house. Yeah. Tudbury's definitely getting an invitation. House Wild. Stedman. Seaworth and Selmy, of course. House Rogers. It's, that it's looks. Oh wait, right. no, they have a bunch of horses. That looks like they're gonna come in in our thing. Uh, let's 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 assassinate them. Um, fun fact: House Rogers is actually a reference to an authorizing of Oh, I feel like most of these are literary references. I am too uncultured to understand. Rogers Elasm, um, who wrote the Chronicles of Amber. Oh, in and uh, wild is probably uh, one as well. It's an easy one. Um, ooh, bowling has a cool uh, banner. Let's be friends with them. Is Brown Hill just a question mark, or did they not have one? It's just that they don't know what the um, the sigil looks like. Fair. All right. Honestly, I think we should just let uh, Invisible decide if he shows up because. Uh... Yeah, basically send letters to all the minor houses that are in this region. Yeah, because not all of them might show up, and. Um... Yeah. Um, with that, uh, why don't we? I can definitely come up with like four to six that would respond, and that would attend. Um, just give me, um, I'm going to call it early tonight, folks. I am taking the medicine. Uh, it's ambient for reference. I did not expect it to be kicking in. Uh, okay. Understand. Yeah, no worries. Uh, but I will go ahead and work on, um, the four houses that respond and I will post tomorrow, which houses have basically responded to your, uh, request for an audience. Yeah. Uh, and, and for peace in the wild. Yeah, we're also going to have to figure out who's the most important tenants. I, I mean, we also have Pa's um, children, his daughters. We can also mm -hmm. use those to secure an alliance. Yeah, I don't know who'd want to, but I can have them. Okay. Um, I hope that y'all enjoyed Foundry. It was my first time using it, but hopefully it's nice to have that visualization. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's cool. pretty cool. So I'll continue getting better at it, and we'll keep using it in the game. But uh, I hope everyone has a good night, folks. All right, All right good night. Good night. Right. Yeah, see you next time. Oh. All right. For those of you who join us, as always, have a good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are. If you miss any part of this, this will be on my YouTube channel. As always, stay frosty.